Hello and welcome to our latest tutorial where I'm going to share with you how you can embellish a motif onto a towel. And this is a really fab way to personalize your towels. We've done this on a hand towel here, but we're going to be showing you one on a flannel and you could even do it on a bath towel. It's a really great way to personalize things and you can either put an initial, initials, or you could even put a name if you wanted to. So what are you going to need to do this? Well, you're going to need some fabric of your choice, and we decided to work with some Liberty Prints here. I would recommend that you actually use some Bondaware or some double-sided adhesive, because it will make the process much easier, and we're going to be ironing our motif onto our towel prior to actually stitching around it on the sewing machine. And you may find a pair of scissors and some pins will be useful, as well as an iron, if you're working with the double-sided adhesive. Now, as we decided to do this with letters, we will pr we're printing the letters off our computer and then actually tracing around them. But obviously you could do this with any motif you wanted to, and you could really make this seasonal. So it'd be fabulous to make something specific for Christmas or for a birthday. It's really up to you. And they're really relatively quick projects. So you could produce quite a few of them in a short space of time. So let's get started. Now, whether you're working with a letter or you decided to print off or draw out your own motif, I would recommend that you think about whether it needs to be in a certain direction. For example, a letter, our letter L that we're going to be doing, needs to face in this direction when we're finished. Therefore, if we're working with a double-sided adhesive, we actually will need to work from this side of the letter. So we're working with the letter back to front to start with and we've simply printed this off from our computer and then just drawn around it on the wrong side of the paper so that we can see the reverse of the letter. And the reason why we're going to be having to use the reverse is because with our bond web or double sided adhesive we need to draw around this. And the bond web has two different sides to start with. It will have a very smooth side and a textured side. You need to trace this with the smooth side facing up. So we're drawing on the smooth side of the bond web. And you're going to draw around your letter or motif. Once you're happy that you've drawn around your letter or motif, we're actually going to go to the iron and we're going to actually stick this onto your fabric that you're wanting to embellish. So the fabric that's going to be the letter. And this is the rough side needs to attach to the wrong side of your fabric. And this is why you have to draw it back to front. Because when finished, in your fabric will be sitting on top of this and will be therefore facing you with the right side. If you join me at the ironing board, I will show you how we iron this on. Roughly cut out the letter. You really don't need to cut right on the, the drawn line at this point. You're just roughly cutting out your letter or motif in the bond web. And then you're going to iron this on to the wrong side of your fabric. Okay? So I iron this onto the wrong side, the rough side. So the opposite side to which you drew on will be ironed onto the wrong side of your fabric. And I would just follow the instructions for your double-sided adhesive if you're not working with bond web and it will tell you how long you need to iron it on for. Once you've ironed the bond web or double-sided adhesive onto your fabric you need to cut it out around your drawn line and you may wish to use a small pair or a big pair of scissors depending on how big your motif is. Peel off the back of your double-sided adhesive or bond web. It can be a little bit difficult to get started, but once you get started, you should be able to peel the paper side off the back. And it should reveal a slightly tacky back of your fabric, ready to stick this onto your towel. Position your motif onto your towel. Now for this tutorial, I'm working with a face cloth or a flannel, but you could use a hand towel, a bath towel, whatever you wanted. And it really doesn't have to be a towel that you're putting this on either. And when you position it on, check that it's square and central in the position that you would like. You're then going to use the iron and a little bit of steam 
or a damp pressing cloth to make sure that this is nicely attached. And again, I would recommend following the instructions for your double-sided adhesive. Now we're going to complete a satin stitch to hold the motif onto our toweling. Now I have a separate tutorial about applique and the stitches that you can use and that shares with you how to complete a satin stitch, a zigzag stitch or perhaps a normal stitch to applique a motif onto your fabric. We'll put a link to that in the description box below. Now with regard to a satin stitch you may find that your sewing machine has a setting for a satin stitch. If it doesn't then you're going to need to complete a zigzag and I will show you how we turn that into a satin stitch. Now I've set my machine up for a zigzag stitch. Now the length of this stitch needs to be really small. I would recommend testing this prior to actually doing the real thing and perhaps start on zero and increase the length to up till until you get to about 0.5. You want to be on about 0.2 to 0.3 millimeters. Enough so that the machine is pulling the fabric through but that the stitches are very, very close together and therefore look very, very neat. Now, with regard to the width, you may want to have a play, and this will depend on how thick your fabric is. I'm working on two millimeters, but two to three millimeters should be perfect. Now, I'm going to position my needle into my fabric. And the other thing you want to do when you're testing is you want to make sure that you find the middle point as to where the zigzag is, because we want the zigzag to be jumping from our motif fabric onto the toweling and for the edge of the motif to be the middle of the zigzag. But this will take perhaps a little bit of practice and may depend on your machine. And then you're simply going to stitch. And you should see here that my machine is pulling my fabric through, but the stitches are very, very close together and therefore very, very neat. The worst thing that can happen is that if your machine perhaps isn't pulling the stitches through, you will find that you end up stitching a large lump and then you won't be able to actually sew over that lump. So you may need to unpick that, which is why it's best to test it and make sure that your machine is pulling the fabric through but is sewing the stitches very, very close together. If perhaps they're too far apart, you can always go over them with this stitch and that's what's good about it. Now, when you get to a corner, like I'm doing here, at the corner of the inside of the L, I'm going to actually need to sew past the corner so that I can then put my needle in, lift the foot, turn, and continue stitching. You may find if you do miss the corner that actually you just need to go backwards to fill that bit in. There we go, perfect. And the great thing about this is that you don't necessarily need to go backwards to start or finish. You can simply sew over yourself. Because the stitches are very close together, it is secure. To turn a corner, you're going to need to gradually work your way around that corner. You may find there are times when you need to position the needle in to the fabric to make a slight turn with the foot. And as I said before, if you need to backstitch at any point to sort of fill areas in or sew over them, it's really not a problem at all. You can get away with quite a lot, especially when you're working on the toweling. And when we get back to the start, we will simply sew over ourselves again. And then either trim the threads or thread them through a needle and pull them through to the wrong side of your fabric to knot them off. And here you have it. After finishing the satin stitch, I simply trimmed off my threads. But if you would prefer, you're more than welcome to thread the threads from this side through a needle, take them to the back and tie them off. It's really up to you. But if you've gone over yourself, you should be fine just to cut them off. So I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. This is a really fun way to make a super quick project as a gift for someone. Thanks for watching.